APGO Educational Topic 35, Vulvar and Vaginal Disease. Vulvar and vaginal conditions occur frequently and can be distressing with serious consequences. Vaginitis gynecology visits are very common with over 10 million office visits per year. The percent of American women who reported symptoms in the past year was 8% for Caucasian women and 18% for African American women. The objectives of this video are to formulate a differential diagnosis for vulvovaginitis, interpret a wet mount microscopic examination, describe the variety of dermatologic disorders of the vulva, and finally discuss steps in the evaluation and management of a patient with vulvovaginal symptoms. Let's meet Dr. Vulva Vagina. When a patient presents with vulvovaginitis symptoms, I am having itching, burning, irritation, and discharge. What are the most common causes that are at the top of the differential diagnosis? Bacterial vaginosis is the cause 22 to 25 percent of the time, vulvovaginal candidiasis 17 to 39 percent, and trichomonas 4 to 35 percent. Taking a careful history will often help to narrow the diagnosis. A thick white discharge with itching is the classic presentation for yeast. A thin white discharge with a fishy odor is the classic presentation for bacterial vaginosis. And a yellow frothy discharge with odor is the classic presentation for trichomonas. The cornerstone of diagnosis is the wet mount. A dry speculum is placed in the vagina and a specimen of vaginal discharge is swabbed. Be careful not to get cervical mucus which will alter the pH of the specimen. The pH is a very helpful triage point. Normal pH in a reproductive age woman is between 3.8 to 4.5. A pH of less than 4.5 is usually yeast, whereas pH greater than 4.5 is usually bacterial vaginosis or trichomonas. Here is a wet mount photograph of a normal vaginal epithelial cell with nice smooth borders. In contrast, here is the classic clue cell of bacterial vaginosis. Note the stippled borders of this cell. Adding a few drops of potassium hydroxide to the vaginal discharge produces an amine or fishy odor. This is commonly referred to as a positive whiff test. Bacterial vaginosis is a polymicrobial infection characterized by a lack of balance in the vagina. There is overgrowth of anaerobic organisms and a lack of normal lactobacilli. The diagnosis is made clinically when a patient has abnormal vaginal discharge, pH greater than 4.5, positive whiff test, and or presence or clue cells. Treatment is with oral or topical metronidazole or topical clindamycin. Here is a wet mount slide showing the characteristic budding hyphae of vulvovaginal candidiasis or yeast. It is often helpful to add some potassium hydroxide to the slide in order to better visualize the yeast. Candida albicans is the organism in 90% of cases. Other organisms include Candida glabrata and Candida tropicalis. Vulvovaginal candidiasis is more common in women who are pregnant, diabetic, or obese, on antibiotics, corticosteroids, or oral contraception. Other practices that keep the vaginal area warm and moist, such as wearing tight clothing, wet swimsuits, or habitual use of panty liners. Diagnosis is by wet mount visualization of blastospores or pseudohyphae or a positive yeast culture. Treatment is with vaginal imidazole, such as myconazole, clotrimazole, or terconazole, or single dose oral fluconazole. Lastly, here is the characteristic wet mount finding of the trichomonas organism with its characteristic flagella. The trichomonas organism is transmitted via sexual contact but can also survive in swimming pools and hot tubs. It is associated with PID, endometritis, and can facilitate HIV transmission. The diagnosis is by the wet mount, and women diagnosed with trichomonas should also be screened for other STDs, especially gonorrhea and chlamydia. Treatment is with oral metronidazole or tinidazole. The partner should be treated as well. Many patients presenting with vaginitis symptoms will also have associated vulvar itching complaints. This is a good time to take a quick moment to review Anatomy 101. Mixing up the distinction between vulva and vagina is something that can instantaneously mark someone as an amateur in this business. Don't forget, vulva is the labia majora, labia minora, vestibule and perineum on the outside, vagina is on the inside. Many patients assume that itching equals yeast, but this is definitely not the case. In a report of 200 new patients presenting to a vulvar specialty clinic, the etiology for the itchy vulva was contact dermatitis in 20% of the cases, recurrent yeast 20%, lichen sclerosis or lichen simplex chronicus 11%, bacterial vaginosis 7%, vulvar vestibulitis 13%, and atrophic vaginitis 13%. Since contact dermatitis is such a common source of vulvar itching, it's important to realize what the common vulvar irritants consist of. Shampoos and body washes with fragrance. Creative underwear. 100% cotton underwear is the best. And don't forget to ask about maxi pads and panty liners. 
It is important to discuss these vulvar comfort care measures and to offer tips for breaking the itch scratch cycle. It's important to emphasize that if the itching does not get better with topical steroids or does not seem to make sense, then a biopsy should be performed. The biopsy will evaluate for dysplasia and cancer and can also diagnose benign vulvar conditions. We will conclude this video by discussing the benign vulvar conditions of lichen sclerosis, lichen planus, and lichen simplex chronicus. Lichen sclerosis is a benign chronic dermatologic condition characterized by marked inflammation, epithelial thinning, and distinct dermal changes. Here is a photograph of lichen sclerosis. Note the obliteration of the labia minora and the cigarette paper quality of the skin. Patients will often experience vulvar itching and burning. Treatment is with topical corticosteroids. It is important to note that women with lichen sclerosis are at increased risk of developing squamous cell carcinoma of the vulva. Lichen planus is a rare inflammatory skin condition that can affect the skin, oral cavity, vulvar, and vagina. Women can experience chronic vulvar burning and itching, insertional dyspareunia, and profuse vaginal discharge. Note that lichen planus can affect both the vulva and the vagina, whereas lichen sclerosis only affects the vulva. Lichen simplex chronicus is a bit of a mouthful and describes the skin changes that occur with the itch scratch cycle. Here is a photograph of contact dermatitis. Note the erythema of the labia majora. With scratching, there is mechanical irritation which leads to epidermal thickening and an inflammatory cell infiltrate, which makes the skin itchier, thus the cycle. Treatment for lichen simplex chronicus is also topical corticosteroids, as well as counseling on how to avoid skin irritants and the importance of breaking the itch scratch cycle. This concludes the video on vulvar vaginitis. We have reviewed the common symptoms, wet prep findings and treatments for yeast, bacterial vaginosis, and trichomonas, and discussed the complexity of diagnosing and treating the itchy vulva.